Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Now you get to talk about another lawsuit. I know. The Ring Boy lawsuit. What's going on? Well, they, Big story uh, on the front page, by the way, if you haven't seen it, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I wrote a really long story on it. It's, um, you know, essentially what happened is um, in, in Maryland, they passed a law last year that um, ended the statute of... Basically, in, in the case of un, an underage uh, sexual abuse uh, case or cases... Um, the statute of limitations, which would, in these cases would have long since expired, it's out the window. There is no such thing as statute of limitations. You can bring it back. So um, this, en this enabled a couple of law firms in the Baltimore area. They found um, five former ring boys who they detailed the stories, and the, the, it's pretty gross stuff. Um, and it's it's in the story that uh, is on the front page, but. Um, it's it all goes back to Mel Phillips and the allegations from all five of them that, um, you know, essentially Mel Phillips uh, met them, you know, at the ages of like 13, 14, 15, um, you know, usually hanging around the arenas at, at, at wrestling shows. In some cases, in two of the cases, um, they were kids from Philadelphia where Mel Phillips was based. And he's just cruising the streets and sees kids playing, you know, back like this is in the 80s right so this is uh you know a little bit after i grew up and you know we we played on the streets and we played baseball on the streets all day long you know like that i never see that now you know i drive around and you know i i don't say never i've i've never seen anyone play baseball on the streets i mean and that's all we did but anyway he would come up and hey you want to meet some wrestlers i can you know i can take you backstage blah 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 a lot of kids were wrestling fans you know the idea i can take you to the spectrum you can i'll get you front row seats you can help with the ring crew you can meet jimmy snooker you know what i mean and um that would be his entree and um he would take the kids and he sometimes take them out to dinner and and they would work on the ring crew and then they would be in the hotel room with him and he would you know, do really gross things, like really freaking gross. You know, his deal was he liked to wrestle the kids in their underwear. You know, these are like 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kids. Um, and, you know, we ejaculate on them and it's, it's, you know, I don't really want to get into the details of them, but it's gross as hell. And, you know, again, there's five different uh, plaintiffs here whose names were not released. But, um, you know, the stories match up with the stories that we heard back with in the Tom Cole era and um, look we, we all we all knew about Mel Phillips and I mean the, the basic gist of the lawsuit Mel Phillips passed away you know over over a decade ago 12 years ago about about, about. Um, but this lawsuit is against Vince McMahon Linda McMahon for being aware of this and allowing it to continue and also against TKO Sports, which is the you know because of um, you know they're the the what, what they bought what was formerly World Wrestling Entertainment Titan Sports as it was called back then, um, and um, you know I mean it was it was in their dressing rooms that some of this happened. Um, it was one of their employees or independent contractors, but the head of their ring crew who was doing this. And um, so, I mean, they're basically saying that, that they should have had responsibility, that they should have had knowledge, that they did have knowledge, and to a degree they did. You know, may, you know, people will dispute how much knowledge, but everybody knew to a degree. Um, and, you know, I went through the whole history of everything like that. There was another lawsuit that was settled years ago on this, and of course the Tom Cole lawsuit, which was also settled back in... Um, uh, 1992 um, so there have been you know those and look when you have like again sometimes in, in cases like this when it's like one person filing a suit for sexual abuse you know you don't sometimes go like well you know people lie right and it could be you know it could not be true when you're getting five and there's there's two others that have already sued now we're talking seven um, there was talk that the FBI was aware of 10, you know, of these cases, but um, they didn't file because they essentially, 
when they were investigating this, and this is in the early 90s, um, you know, they, they had videotape even, but they, it was like you could look at it and you kind of know what it was, but they didn't feel confident that the tape itself proved that they weren't just horsing around and that it was not necessarily sexual, even though they believed it was, and that there's enough plausible deniability in the tapes that they saw because they actually had tapes of some of this stuff. Um, and the, 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 the victims, alleged victims back then, you know, were starstruck. They didn't want to testify. You know, I mean, one of the things it's, it's, you know, you're in that wrestling business, even, even in as, as ring boys. And one of the things you're taught is like, you never tell anyone anything. Um, when Mel, you know, obviously was doing the stuff, you know, he, he, he when the, at the end of the day, after he would sleep with the kids, you know, he would bring them home to their houses and give them 80 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, you know, which in the 80s, you know, for, for a 14 year old kid, right? It's a substantial amount of money. And the caveat was, you know, never tell your parents, never tell your parents what happened. So, so nobody did. I mean, when Tom Cole came forward, I mean, there were other ring boys. And then, you know, as I recall, when it happened, it was like there were other names out there. And then all of a sudden, Everybody, when Tom Cole, of course, settled, and everybody else just all of a sudden, you know, right when Phil Mushnick started writing about it, they all went cold and quiet. And I remember Mike Sawyer, you know, he used to be affiliated with the site. You know, we would see him all the time. And he would, you know, he was in Buffalo, you know, where he knew um, some of the kids. And he would say, like, all of a sudden, they're all driving around in new cars, you know? So it's like kind of like what, you know, that's what happened. Um I think in filing the lawsuit, they expect now that it's so many years later and, and these people are adults and perhaps they've had a lot of trauma from this and um, they're not dying to go back to wrestling and starstruck by wrestling. And so they, I think they feel that more will come forward. But that's the gist of the lawsuit is that um, Vince and Linda McMahon and they, you know, Linda McMahon's name is in the lawsuit, um, which is an interesting one because, of course, you know, she's involved with 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 president trump um or former president trump um as far as you know she's um campaigning for him she was in his uh, um you know a cabinet um on the at, at time, during the first term and um so she's involved i mean when when, when i read this i mean this is a freaking detailed lawsuit this is this like i've seen a lot of lawsuits against wwe over the years you know from the you know just in recent years um, you know, the MLW one, which was settled for $20 million. The Saudi Arabia cover-up, which was settled for, I believe, $37 million. And this one, they were asking for $300 million, by the way. Um, but this one, as far as detailed work, um, you know, I've read the concussion one, which was a very poorly written one, and, and you know, ended up going nowhere. But um, as far as, you know, like, as far as detailed work... I mean, this 81-page suit is filled with details, and um, the, you know, they they have witnesses. They have uh, five alleged victims who told very detailed stories. It was it's a pretty scary, thorough case. It's probably the most thorough case that I've ever seen filed against in in one of these WWE lawsuits. And uh, you know, it, it's you know, again, there's no way this one's going to court. I mean, this one's going to be settled. And it's just a question, again, of how much it's settled for and how many victims end up coming forward. Um, the people who were doing this suit, the, the two firms in Baltimore, um, they have pretty good track records on this. And this is, a, a you know, like I said, a very, very detailed case going through a lot of articles, a lot of things that have been written, some stuff by me, a lot of stuff by Phil Mushnick, Fix and Span, you know, um, st stuff. Um it's really damning when you read it all, you know, read the whole thing. Um, and, um, you know, it's, I mean, I never thought that it would, that this would get to this level because the thing that, you know, again, it's the eighties and now are, are, you know, when it comes to professional wrestling are so different, even though pro wrestling was very popular then it was one of those things where nobody would cover it. I mean, there was no, there was no real media covering wrestling. I mean, Phil Mushnick was the exception of the rule. This one, this lawsuit pretty much, you know, it's funny in this week because between the, um, or the last few weeks between the, um, the uh, Vince 
documentary and then that crazy thing that with uh, Pierce Morgan the other day. You know, Mushnick's been in the news a lot. And this is a pretty strong vindication of him. And Vince's lawyer, Jessica uh, Taub Rosenberg, um, she, um, her statement, which I thought was very weak, you know, she's a great lawyer, but it's very weak, was essentially to blame this all on Phil Mushnick. And it's like, you know, if you read this lawsuit, you can't get away with that one because, you know, even though Phil Mushnick's name is is all over the lawsuit with things that he had written, the fact is, is that these, um, you know, these alleged victims were not people who spoke to Phil Mushnick and they corroborated, you know, they did corroborate things that Tom Cole, who did speak to Mushnick, um, you know, had had said um, it, it's, uh, you know. It's mostly Phillips stuff. I mean, stuff involving um, Terry Garvin, Pat Patterson, you know, th those are the names. I mean, they are mentioned in the suit. And the idea is, is that, um, you know, just certain things where everybody knew, Vince knew, Vince had to know. Um, you know, they talked about the stuff on the Larry King show and the Donahue show and everything like this. And... Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they're they're going to have to settle, and uh, you know, um, that, that's just how it's going to end up. You know, as far as what the, what the settlement will be, who knows? But um, you know, like I said, so it was going back as far as like the eighties go. It was just different because nobody would cover wrestling back then. Now, a lot of people cover wrestling. The Vince documentary just came out, so the name of Vince McMahon to the general public is. Very, very big. I mean, that's why they timed it. And I mean, they literally just wrote this suit. This is not like something. I mean, there's lots of the suit has quotes from that documentary, which just came out. So this suit was written literally in the last two weeks because since that documentary came out um, and, you know, because of that, it's, you know, the suit will get a lot of traction and has gotten traction, you know, in, in places that, uh, you know, normally, you know, like wouldn't have in the past so um vince very much been you know i brought this up you know the the the, the cole case and these this case was very reminiscent of what got uh, joe paterno years ago you know and joe paterno was a you know a much higher profile person than vince mcmahon by leaps and bounds penn state football is a lot more um you know a lot bigger than um you know, as far as in the sports world than world wrestling entertainment. But they could not keep a lid on the story. Um, and Vince could because the media would not, you know, walk away and, and not touch Penn, a Penn State football scandal. Well, they just didn't want to deal with a wrestling story because rest is so sleazy and everything. But today that's different. So um, it ended up, I mean, the whole thing here, you know, it's this one and also with the Reed Chatterton case. It was new laws um, allowing, you know, basically removing statute of limitations on victims that allowed Rita Chatterton, because her statute of limitations, as Vince said, if you remember in that uh, in the in the piece, when Vince was brought up on the Rita, when the Rita Chatterton thing was brought up and Vince goes, well, you know, and this was from 2021, I believe, is when he did this interview. And he was just like, you know, it was consensual. And even if it wasn't, the statute of limitations has run out. And it's like, well, they passed a law and they um, allowed, you know, people from way, way back, as far back as you want to go. The statute of limitations in New York did not run out. She was ready to file suit and she got a multi-million dollar settlement um, because of that. And then in this case, this again, statute of limitations on this stuff ran out decades ago. But now they were removed in maryland and that's what led to the suit and there that's where we're going but it was a so we're pretty ghastly reading it you know it was like reading the the you know and you know the janelle grant thing over again and it's really just you know it really um it makes it makes you know that company back then from back then and vince uh, really look bad for looking the other way and they did look the other way I mean it's like people did tell jokes about it and people you know again like the Mel Phillips stuff like you know I mean I mean people knew and Vince knew and it was just like you back then 
you know, you, you looked the other way and, and the authorities did too. You know, I mean, if you, you know, the, you know, you remember back Jimmy Snuka, you know, the uh, Nancy Argentina died on, I believe, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and Jimmy Snuka's back wrestling on a Friday. Something like that happened today, he'd never be wrestling again. So it's a different, different era, and, um, you know, for the better, too. But, um, you know, this one appears to have, you know, all of that uh, stuff that they appeared to have dodged decades ago. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.